the Van Healy model for geometry. Who are the Van Healy's? Pierre and Dina Van Healy are mathematics educators from the Netherlands. In 1957, they both wrote doctoral theses on five levels of geometric thinking of children. Dina died shortly thereafter, but Pierre continues to develop and disseminate their geometrical model. Ten of their papers were translated into English in 1984 as part of an NSF program. The Soviet Union has adopted the model in the 1960s and has been popular in the United States since the 80s. The Van Healy model consists of five levels with five transitional phases. These sequential levels are hierarchical, meaning that a child moves from level zero to level four. Progress between the levels depends on children's experiences in geometry and not just their developmental age. Level zero is visualization. Children at this level categorize basic shapes by appearance only with a high attention to orientation and symmetry. They often refer to visual prototypes such as a rectangle looks like a door, a circle looks like a ball, a yield sign looks like a triangle. They are not able to describe triangles in an abstract sense but simply as something that it looks like. Teachers can use activities to help students transition from level zero to level one. Children need to examine many examples and non-examples. Here is an example of six different pictures that may or may not be triangles. Children need to be able to sort and classify shapes to see what a triangle has in common. That it's three corners, straight sides, that it doesn't matter if it's upside down and that it has no bent in parts. Children can also use hidden figure puzzles to look at details in a complex field. They can take shapes and rearrange them into other shapes using such items as tangrams or the Van Healy mosaic puzzle. They need ample opportunity to draw, build, make shapes, put together shapes, and take apart shapes. Here is an example of a hidden figures puzzle. Can you find the three bears hiding in the woods? These were popular in the Highlights magazine in the 60s. Students can rearrange basic shapes to make complex figures, such as this activity. Make as many houses as you can using basic shape blocks. Children can trace the outside of their houses on a sheet of paper to record their many houses. Tangrams can be bought commercially or made by the children using cardstock or foam board. The tangrams consist of seven different shapes which can be rearranged to make different animal, people, and other figures. These are popular for children to play with, but they can be used mathematically by referring to the shapes by name, talking about how many corners and edges they have. You can even talk about angles and symmetry. The Van Healy mosaic puzzle is similar to triangles, to tangrams, but it has other different shapes. The Van Healy specifically designed this so children could work with multiple shapes to make multiple other shapes. Level 1 is analysis. Students and adults at level 1 can recognize basic shapes and name their properties, but they don't understand the ordered relationships between the shapes or properties. They are not able to consider an infinite variety of shapes, such as all possible triangles, and they cannot discern between the necessary and sufficient properties for each shape. But the properties are now more important than just the appearance of the shape. However, they will still insist that a square is not a rectangle. Activities you can use to help your students transition from level one to level two. They need to analyze classes of figure to determine new properties. Sort all possible triangles into groups. Which of them have right angles? Which of them are symmetric? Which of them have an obtuse angle? Identify the relationships of, of shapes by folding, measuring, and looking for symmetry. They can find counterexamples for common properties. Do all triangles have a right angle? Folding paper with a dot placed on it and then predicting where the dot will show up when the paper is unfolded. 
They can fold and cut and predict the shape in the middle of the paper when it's opened, as in the diagrams below. Teachers can use dynamic geometry software or geoboards to help students work with different shapes. Here's a common geoboard. This is a 5x5 five five post geoboard. They come in larger sizes. Students can use elastics or rubber bands to make different shapes on the geoboard. They're easy to change and overlap and to classify. And pictures that are made on the geoboard can then be drawn on geoboard dot paper to keep for homework. Level 2, Abstraction. The student understands that properties of shapes are related and that one set of properties may imply another property. For instance, if a square has a right angle, we can also say that the measure of its angle is 90 degrees. Students can recognize relationships between types of shapes and even use informal arguments to talk about why a, shape is a, why a square is a rectangle. For example, they do recognize that all squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are square, and they may be able to discuss this. Activities to help your students transition from level 2 to level 3. Encourage your students to make and test conjectures or ideas. Is that true for all triangles or just equilateral ones? Help them determine the necessary and sufficient conditions for properties of different shapes. Why does a pentagram always have five sides. Does it have to be fat and puffy or can it be dented in? Students can learn the technical language for shapes and their properties and use the language of informal deduction. All circles have a radius. Some triangles have a right angle. No circles have a right angle. If a square is five inches wide, then it's five inches tall. Encourage your students to attempt informal proofs and help them to engage in open-ended tasks such as this one. How many different polygons can you make on a geoboard with area six? They can record their answers on geoboard paper or graph paper. Level three is deduction. Students at this level understand the role of undefined terms, definition of terms, axioms and theorems in Euclidean geometry. However, they believe that these are fixed rather than arbitrary, and so they're not ready to deal with non-Euclidean geometries. Geometric ideals are still understood to be in the Euclidean plane. We'll learn more about non-Euclidean geometry in this class. Level three is the level of a high school geometry class. However, most students in high school are not ready to learn at this level. So if a teacher teaches at this level, the students may not be ready to engage. Level four is rigor. Students at this level understand that definitions and properties are arbitrary, and they need not actually refer to any real world phenomenon. Students are capable of a high level of abstraction and can create rigorous formal proofs. They are able to compare and contrast Euclidean and non-Euclidean geometries. Mathematicians tend to perform at this level. This is what is expected at graduate school.